Big news roundup today, kicking it off, the legendary workshop creator Darwin Streams found this, revealing that Brigida's rally armor is bugged, perhaps has always been, to block up to 45% more damage than regular armor because it has a layering effect. It seems because Brigida's armor stacks, it's making it harder to chew through, where we would expect a soldier shot to always do 17 damage due to the minus 3 effect from normal armor, against the rally armor, the the damage coming in has to sort of ramp up and break through until it builds up to the normal value that we expect. Now there's a chance this is how Blizzard intended for it to work because Rally is an ultimate after all, but I somehow doubt it because they typically like the effects of the game to be uniform, meaning that this is more than likely an unintended bug, something that without the workshop to be able to give us live feedback with the damage numbers showing up on screen would have been hard to spot. All this time we were wondering why Brigida felt unkillable with Rally R Armor? Well, now we finally know. It always has been, and currently is, blocking a significant percentage extra damage than you would expect. I would be surprised if Blizzard leaves it this way because they love consistency, and as this gets brought to their attention, I would assume that they would fix it to be more consistent, or at the very least, maybe explain if this was the intended way that the ult would work because it's supposed to be like super armor, maybe. But if so, why is there like different damage numbers? It just seems kind of weird, right? probably unintended. Moving on to the next major news story, the Korean shoutcaster who does the Korean language streams for the Overwatch League broadcasts made a YouTube video, which is linked in this Reddit post, but in Korean, I can't translate it, so I'm going to be going off of the translation provided here by Redditor Sapir Ablo, who, if this is to be believed, says that the caster, Jung Inho, leaked out that stage four of the Overwatch League may have a 2-2-2 roll lock. In the video, he talked about the GOATS comp 3-3 and how the developers have attempted to kill the composition with nerfs to no avail. And according to him anyway, Blizzard is considering the nuclear option to kill GOATS comp locking the rolls. Now, they do say that they can't guarantee that it'll be implemented for stage four because they say it has been postponed before. And this raises a lot of questions. If Blizzard is going to be putting this kind of thing into the Overwatch League, does that mean something similar? Similar would be coming to the main game. We know that Blizzard really likes both the league and the game to be on a similar patch. How would the community feel if something came into the league before the game or vice versa? I'll remind us all that the slasher leaks that we've covered previously on this channel have not been disproven yet. The previous slasher leak never indicated directly to Roll Q, though I did interpret it to mean that. However, he did say those huge changes would maybe come into the league before the game. Well, now if this new league is to be believed, perhaps there was a bit of a discussion about that, whether it was better to just put it into the league immediately or to wait until whatever these new systems and features would be to launch with the game as well. Jeff Kaplan has repeatedly hinted that the summer feature yet to be released is, and I'm somewhat paraphrasing here, what the community has been asking for. Maybe this is indicating that they're trying to launch everything all at the same time. Only time will tell, but from my standpoint, I still trust the slasher leaks. I think huge changes are around the corner it's just a matter of time for them to come out. I can't speak on the accuracy of any of these things, but it's sort of like a storm coming. I can feel it in my bones. There's no way that Blizzard is just putting in cupcake patches that don't affect the top level meta at all without some sort of other plan that they're setting up to put into place. Would the Overwatch League, though, switch on an entirely different state of play as late into the season as Stage 4 or into the playoffs? Well, they kind of did that last year. And in my opinion, anyway, this whole GOATS meta thing is going to be lost in the annals of history as something we laugh about like oh yeah do you remember when that was a thing as we sip tea with our pinkies out how uncivilized they were back then no damage picks how did those poor souls live in a time before there was equal splits of the three classes distributed in every team comp so with that being the case i said we just ripped this band-aid off not everyone's gonna be happy about that because some teams may drop like a rock in the standings but i don't think it's going to be that bad actually because most teams anyway were built with the anticipation of damage eventually coming back. And in fact, I think a lot of them assumed that it would have happened much earlier. So yeah, some of the most dominant GOATS teams might not be so dominant anymore, but a huge percentage of the league is pretty interchangeable with their power level right now, which in my opinion kind of delegitimizes this entire meta and format to begin with. So let's just get it over with. Otherwise in Overwatch League news, there's quite an interesting narrative developing around the Houston Outlaws. One of my favorite writers and commenters on the scene, Yiska, wrote this 
heads up that the season isn't over for the Unshackled Outlaws. And why is that? Well, despite them going 0-7 last stage, coming into stage 3, they are looking incredibly hot. And no, I'm not joking. Benchmob, who's my go-to guy for power rankings, has them placed at 9th. 9th! Everyone had them at like 20th a month ago. This is the biggest bandwagon jump I've ever seen, and I trust Bench. I don't think he's overvaluing them necessarily, but the reason being is in week 1, they took the NYXL to 5 maps. Of course, they lost in Houston Outlaws fashion, but just this week, they picked up a big upset against the San Francisco Shock, a team who hasn't lost since the Stage 1 Finals. And now, as Yiska reports, with their toughest matches behind them, the rest of their schedule is one of the easiest in the league. So despite them being at the bottom of the standings, their power level is such that they could farm up some of these easier games left for them and actually make a run for the play-in tournament in Stage 4. This would be an awesome, heroic comeback run that we sort of saw a team like the Dallas Field go on last year, but this year, with the new format, the 7th through 12th place teams have a play-in tournament in Stage 4, who the top two make it into the playoffs. So all they have to do is get up to 12th place in order to have a shot at that to then make an epic run into the grand finals and wrap this all up with the prettiest of bows. If these Rolock leaks are true, it's even scarier because word on the street is Houston Outlaws in scrims just bodies people, especially with their Widowmaker player Linkser. It's a little bit harder to end up doing this on stage for a number of reasons, especially since the maps are pre-selected for you and Houston's GOATS play is, I mean, last I checked, there was like, some stats showing that they were literally the worst GOATS team. Maybe this is from like a week ago, but they said it on the broadcast that their team fight win rate on the full 3-3 was ranked the worst in the league, but they've been trying to play the DPS even more than they did in the previous stage. And when they do have to play a GOATS variant, they're doing the Sombra version. Dante, one of the best Sombras in the league, was key in their victory over the Shock, indicating that this miracle run might happen. So good luck to Houston. It would be quite the comeback story, but that's going to be everything for today's news roundup video. If you enjoyed the vid, please be sure to leave it a like. It really does help us out and lets us know that you're enjoying the content. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell icon so that you get notified when our videos go live. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. See you guys next time.